Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Jean. Today I come with a little different project for you. Instead of altering a composition book cover, I am going to make a binder to hold one. And it does have a pen holder too. So you have pens, pencils, whatever in there. I like things that clip on so then they stay in there. So um, I do alter composition books, but I also, um, you know, sometimes don't save them because I use them on a daily basis. Like I might make my grocery list. I might just write, write notes down. And uh, so I'm not going to decorate it, but yet I don't want to look at this every day either. You know, when you're a crafter, you like pretty things to look at. So I made this little binder for it and it just slips in the, the side pockets. Got your little pen holder on the side and then it closes up. You get a cute little binder. You can carry that around with you if you want. But I'm one that like, I like to make a grocery list. I like to write notes down. I like to write, I don't like scheduling on my phone. It's quicker for me to schedule on paper and quicker for me to see everything. So I take notes, I write down what kind of projects I'm gonna show you guys, things like that. I wasn't gonna show you that notebook, so you gotta clean one. So this is what we are going to work on today. And I typically do not decorate um, my binders because, you know, they go through a lot of abuse every day. So um, I don't want to waste a lot of embellishments and stuff like that on it because it's going to just get thrown away. Um, in fact, my other one was pretty beat up, so I didn't want to show that to you. So I quickly made this one and we are going to make another one. So this is my little sample to show you and we are going to make one together. Of course, I'll be using this one too. Okay. So the first one we're going to need, I have everything cut out to save us a little bit of time because it'll take a little bit to put this together. So the first thing we have our chipboard. We need two pieces that are 10 and a half by eight. And now this, you can use anything. This is the back of a paper, some paper packs, some Cricut's paper pack, in fact. And um, it's, I don't even know how thick it is, but it's, it's pretty nice chipboard. Don't throw stuff like that away. You can use stuff like that. Of course, you can get chipboard. You can use like cereal boxes or whatever. But typically, I'll glue um, two pieces of cereal box together because I, yeah, I think they're a little too flimsy for me. And then you can need one that's 10 and a half by one inch. Okay, so that's for that. Now, for our cover piece, we are going to need two sheets of whatever color you want. I typically do a solid color because I don't like to waste my whole pattern. I did on this one to show you guys. So I did the whole outside pattern paper, but you tend to maybe waste a little bit. And I do like to show a colored border. So this is the one I made you just to quick, quickly, you know, show you that you don't have to make uh, two layers like I did. Um, so now I'm going to make one where we're going to layer uh, the pattern paper over the top of our plain paper. So now you're going to need two sheets for our book cover that are 12 by 10 and a quarter and then we're going to overlap that by a half an inch so what we're going to do is we're going to take it the 12 inch side this way okay make sure you can't see my messy dust too much okay so i'll use my my um you know mat if you have a mat that has the lines on it, it's perfect or get something else with like a straight edge or something that you can line it up with so we're going to put the 12 inch that goes this way and then the 10 and a quarter will go this way and we are going to overlap by a half an inch. You just want enough extra to wrap around the chipboard. So let's run some glue. I hope you guys are liking some of my projects. You know I haven't been doing this this long I don't know what you guys enjoy yet. You sure enjoyed my napkin tutorials, though. I, I've got another little project with Mod Podge and Fabric coming up. Uh, hopefully, you'll like, too. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to rub it on both sides. Get that out of the way. Okay, and then we are going to lay down our chipboard. Now, you can surely mark things if you want. You know, I'm an eyeballer, you know, but 
you just want to get like you know same amount around so I'm, i'll quickly eyeball and i like to do a quarter inch i'll show you a trick for that in just a minute you know so we're going to probably go an inch on the sides and it's probably three quarters of an inch on the top or half inch on the top and bottom okay so we're just going to lay this out and i'll show you what we're going to do first okay so we'll take our first one and we're going to glue that down again use your little grids on your mat my squares are an inch inch and i'm going to go in inch the first one just throw some glue on you can definitely use tape I prefer glue, it gives me a little extra time. Because if you watch my videos, I can make mistakes. All right, so I'm going to go an inch from the side here, so about an inch, and then let's just eyeball it. Let's see how about the same amount on the top and the bottom. That looks pretty good to me. You don't have to worry about it, you're just gonna be flipping it over anyways. All the papers is just gonna cover this up and we are going to put paper on the inside too okay now i like to do a quarter inch in between mine because that way it folds up nicely okay i have this little piece of wood i don't even know what it came i've had this for years what it came off and, and it is exactly a quarter inch so for me that works out perfect so if you can find something like that hang on to it it's good for if you make a lot of albums and then We'll just butt it up against there, and we know we're a perfect quarter inch. Okay, so we have that tight against there. Throw some glue down. And we're going to put it kind of eyeball from where that other one is. And push it up against there. Now, before I press down hard, I take my stick out and then make sure I'm pretty even top and bottom. Simple as that, and then go ahead and press it down. Okay, next one, we'll put that board in there. I just, you know, I found that piece by accident, and I'm like, one day I was working on albums, I'm like, I need something so that I know I'm getting a perfect quarter inch there. And so I was like looking around the house and found that and measured it. I'm like, well, that'll work. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there. You can measure, like, you can, you know, measure things out and, and draw lines on there if you like, but I'm not that perfect. Okay, so now you have that. Okay. That's what you got so far. It's going to be your cover. Now we are going to fold all our pieces, all our sides in. So first we need to kind of cut some of this bulk off on the side, on the corners. Now you don't want to get right up tight against. So you're like, see how my scissors like fits away? That's like a less than, about an eighth inch or so. You want to stay away from your corner. And just cut on an angle like that. And so something like that. You don't want too much. And hang on to those. You might need them. I'll show you. In fact, I'll do it. Okay, all four corners like that. I don't know why I keep doing big projects for you guys. They're hard to tape. Okay, hang on to those for a minute. Okay, so then I take my little stylus again and I run it along the edge there just to help bend the paper. And then I'll slowly, it goes slower, you have a better chance of it not cracking on you. I've had paper crack on me. Don't let it get you down. It still comes up beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna put that down. Now we'll glue it down. Bring it up. There you go. We got one side. I typically tend to do my short sides first. 
Doesn't really matter though, that's just how I work. When you do something for so long, it just kind of gets to be a habit. Now, if you want, you can definitely use clips to hold this, but this glue actually works pretty fast. Okay. Get some of the glue off my hands. Do you guys always fill the glue when you're done crafting? Always. And I just score it down. I don't expect to ever stay clean when I'm crafting. Nope. I have so much glue on me. By the time I'm done. Ink, if I'm inking or painting or something like that, yep, I'll be covered in it. Okay, so my corners, like, so my corners are matching up fine. Can you see that? You don't see no uh, chipboard. But if it doesn't, if you have a gap, which I should have checked first. You stick this, you just stick this in the corner underneath your paper, and then you won't see that. And I should have checked that first, and I meant to do that. But so you would just take it and tuck it under your your papers. But mine are matching up. So it's fine. So that's why you want to keep those corners in case it doesn't match up. that one up. It's a little bit longer, so it's going to take me a minute. Let's work my way in there. I'm just keep working it. it. wants to fight me a little bit. It's a longer piece. Eventually, I win. Paper loses. Paper loses to the glue, see? Just like that. But then again, you go ahead and use clips if you want, if you need the help. I don't think I have any down here to show you. There's sewing clips. And I don't, oh, I do have one. So I can show you. I like these little clips, I like sewing clips. But I use them a lot when I need when I'm working on 3D projects. Because I'd like to have each step dry before I start another step. So I'll tend to put some clips on and then go off and do another step. Just because when I'm doing albums and stuff like that, I want to make sure it's good and glued down. But because we're working on video, okay, that corner is matching and that corner is fine. Down good. I hope you guys, you know, like my projects enough. If you do, please give me a like. If you're new, please subscribe to my channel. I know I'm very new yet, but we're going to work this together and uh, come up with what kind of projects you guys like to see and hopefully... You know, I'll do some good content for you. Now, I'm hoping to do some lives. Eventually. Let's see what you guys want me to do live, on. Go live. I have someone asked me to do a craft room tour. Unfortunately, I did have a craft room. But after my brother passed away, my baby brother... Um, I been raising his daughter and, uh, so I gave her my craft room and my husband passed away oh, about nine years ago. So, um, we had ex extra bedroom that was his computer room. And so I turned that into my craft room 
And then uh, my brother passed away about three years now. And so I am raising his daughter who is now ooh, gonna be 16 in January. And so I gave her that one. So I made a little corner in my living room with some kind of organ. I could show you guys that if you want to see with some organizational shelves and stuff like that. Um, I do. We do have a finished basement, but because of our two two-year-old dogs yet that are fairly new, they need to be watched. So it's not like I can come down here and craft my um, taping is down here. I do the taping down here, so I have some privacy and stuff. But um, I need to be able to watch them. So my craft area is in the living room. And uh, that's how I do it now. But but I can show you that. But I can't really show you the craft room I had before that. Okay, so this is what we have now. And I just kind of slightly folded them. And you can see we have a little book. Okay, now we are going to do our insides. So these are going to just cover up like that now you could just put these down and eyeball them like that but let me tell you I have done them wrong more than once and got them on their crooked so I like to do the same thing I do with the cover and let's see we don't need that one no more so our inside layer pieces you need two at ten and a quarter by nine inches and you're going to overlap it in uh, about three quarters of an inch on this one so we're going to lay these out again like we did before. I think we can go a full inch on this one, actually. I think I cut a little extra just so it was a full inch for you guys. Let's make sure. And then I'll change that for you guys. I think at the last minute, I'm like, let's do an inch for them. Yeah, an inch is good. So let's change that if I had a... I do. Look at that. So let's overlap. Make it a little easier for you guys. Overlap an inch instead. Okay, because then like each one of these squares are an inch. So then if you're using a, ma a grid mat like this, then you can, it'll be easier than trying to figure out a three quarters of an inch. Okay, again, let's make sure that's all lined up nicely. And run our glue down. I stay a little bit away from that little line there so that I'm just inside the one inch mark just so it doesn't go seep through too much. Okay. Now we're going to glue this one on top. And then use your grid to line it up and then it should be fairly straight. Why it's kind of drying though, you can pick it up and kind of tap it down a little bit. I don't tend to see that I really need to do that. If I use my grids and I go on the other side. All right, get some of that glue off. Bring this back in. And we're just going to layer this inside. And uh, you can uh, do this any way you want. You can use, you know, designer paper, color paper. But this is just the inside. I really don't care much about the inside of my notebook. You know, I prefer, you know, you don't see the inside. So I prefer my outside to have my pattern paper. All right, let's lay down our glue. rhyme or reason just glue any way you like swirly straight lines I used to be really precise oh my god I gotta do straight lines but you know no you don't just do whatever you want when you glue now let me pick this up a minute so I can see my top so I get it somewhat straight like I said this, this is only the inside I definitely am not perfect Yes, I've crafted for many years, but that doesn't mean I'm perfect. Maybe if I did one type craft, you know, I might be more perfect, but I do so many different type crafts. All right. Perfect. So there's your inside. Now let's find our little, it's not dry yet. I usually like to let it dry. Okay, we're going to let it dry there a little bit before we do it. We can do our pockets first. Okay, so we got rid of that. Let's do our pockets. That holds the little binder in. So we're going to be putting these on the sides like this. 
And so your pockets, you need two of them cut at 10 and three quarters by four and a half. And then you're going to score three sides. You're going to score the two short sides and you're going to score one long side at one quarter inch. Okay, scoreboard back. So now you can do this any way you want. I'll show you two different ways. So quarter inches here. If you can get your finger in there, do quarter inch from there. Okay, turn it. Do quarter inch on the short side and the other short side. Okay. All right, if you don't that like dealing with this little edge, which doesn't bother me, we'll go out here instead, okay? So this is 10 and a half, 10 and three quarter inch, sorry. It's 10 and three quarter inch, inch piece of paper. So you are gonna score it at 10 and one half. Okay, then we'll flip it the other way and do the same thing, 10 and one half. Okay, then we're gonna do the long side. The long side says four and a half. So we are gonna score it at four and a quarter to get our little quarter inch scores, okay? Now, because we have a lot of yellow going on here, but I like bright colors. Okay, let's move this out of the way so we can kind of see what we're doing here. So we have a lot of yellow. Okay. All right. So where it meets down here, let's just snip off those corners. We don't need those. Snip. Snip. We don't need that bulk. See what I did? I just snipped it off there. Okay. Do this one. And this one. Okay. All right. Now we'll crease these in. You have a bone folder. Go ahead and use it. I have a bone folder. I hardly ever use it. You know, you buy all that stuff and you, you know, it's just easier just to use my fingers. I do have it because there's sometimes when I want a really, really, really nice crease. So I'll use it. But most of the time, I just use my fingers. Trust me, I bought plenty of tools over the years. Although my favorite thing is, I have to say, the Cricut Explorer came out oh, about eight years ago, I think. And the Cricut Explorer. And uh, that's like my favorite craft thing ever. So I have the Explorer, I have the Maker, and I have the Joy. And those, I can't live without. All right. So we have those creased inwards. Now we must bring our book back in. And now we are just going to glue those right to the edge of the other yellow one. So you can see where this yellow one is on top. So we're just going to glue those right to the end on both sides. So we're going to glue it right to that edge. Okay, put some glue. Put a single line down, that'll hold just fine. Whoops. Get that off quick. There. And I can be rather messy too. All right, so let's just bring it right to the line. And I've got to get that piece in and that piece down. So fold that in there. Okay, get that, fold it in, fold it in, and fold it in along the top. And let me see, I look like I'm pretty good up there. Get some of the glue off my hands. Oh, I want a little crooked there, I can see. Quick, get it before it dries too much. Doesn't really matter, I made enough space. So that if you do tend to put it on Cricut, your notebook's still going to fit in just fine. Got to prepare for things like that. So, Okay, so there's one of your pockets where it slides in. Okay, so your notebook's going to slide in. Move this over. We're going to do this side now. Same thing. All right. Get glue down there. A 
Well, that one wasn't a very good straight line, was it? Okay, let's line this up to the bottom. Pull it pushed in. Put just a little bit on that cosine. Okay, there's the inside. Now, let's finish up the outside before we put the little pen holder in here because I have to lay it flat to lay it flat be easier. Okay, there you go. That's your inside done. Now, let's go ahead and kind of crease so I know we're on the outside. Okay. So then I know where the paper is going to go. See, now you have that. Looks just like a binder. All right, so now I can see here's where my shipboard ends. And I have, I'm going to put this on today. I'm trying to use some stuff in my stash. Cute little daisies and some stars. Okay, and I can see right there where my seam is. And we are just going to position it in the middle. Now, I don't do any kind of, um, like that side. Yeah, but I didn't do that side. I thought I would do, because I have a Hello Kitty one there, so we thought we'd keep this one. Sorry, Mickey Minnie, but I can't use you all the time. I wanted the flowers on this one. With that yellow close as I can get to match those flowers up with this yellow with my card stash. See, I like a border around. See where the Hello Kitty doesn't have the border because I just used all pattern paper to cover the whole thing. But I prefer having that little pop of color there. Okay, now let's put this side on. Best you can just make sure you're staying away from your folds All right. now then we have this piece was just ten and a quarter by one inch and that's gonna be our spine and I see I could have brought my paper over a little bit but that's okay and now we have our spine piece that in there. Just kind of line that up. All right. Now, there is your binder. Now, let's put in our pen holder. So, I found this one, which is within the same paper pack. And it's got the yellow stars and the kind of a yellowish background. So, Thought we'd use that. All right. So for this piece, we need. Uh, let's see. Where is that piece? Okay. For the pen holder, we need a piece that's five and a half by five and a half. Okay. And then, so that's what I got here. And we're going to score it on three sides, a half inch and one inch on three sides. So I'll show you what we're going to do. Okay. So, do one half inch and one inch. We're going to be making like a little box. And one half inch and one inch. Three sides. Leave the top alone. One half and one. Okay. So, we did not do the top. All right. So, now... Are going to go 
go ahead. I didn't get Donald. I know my Disney paper. Sorry, Donald and Mickey. I didn't want to use you this time. I'm just going to fold these over so we can see where those score marks are. So you guys can see where we're going to cut off. Okay. So it's all going to be folded over. Okay. So then we're going to cut. I think I can cut that off. Actually, I think I can cut the other one off, but let me just see something. And that one off. And then we're going to fold it up and over. Like that. Oop. Silly, silly. Forgot to cut in there. So we cut in like that. So it'll fold over. Okay. Actually, I don't think I need that piece either, do we? Yeah, we don't need to keep that piece either. My mind went somewhere else. Sorry, guys. I knew I was not cutting enough off. That's what you want. So you want to cut both of those, that whole square out. You know, I have like six projects that I'm working on at the same time. <sighs> Lord knows. Like, which is the right project we're working on? Okay. So let's fold it over. And then you can fold this on top like this. We're just going to glue it down like that. So we're going to glue this this piece. And you can glue it either way, top or bottom, because we're not putting paper in there. If I was putting paper in there, I would be putting these side tabs in. But it doesn't really matter because we're putting pens in. Okay, so let's put some glue here. And some glue there. Okay, I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to lay it down for a second so I can square it up. Square it up. Okay, hold that one. Get it squared up down there. Okay, I'll go over to this one. And square it up. And it's a box with no back. Okay. Okay, let's square it up good. Okay, so that's what we have. Let's put that mess out of our way. Okay, and then we're just going to glue this. Get some of that glue up there. And we're just going to glue it right down here. Okay. Okay, just take it. And glue it right down there. And I just kind of push it in and make sure it's all square. Okay, and I'll turn it. And whatever you got laying around, just do the edges. And there it is done. Now bring this other one over and we'll put in a notebook. Because this is the only one I have right now. Because you're not seeing my beat up one. So we have a fresh one to start out. The new year. Okay, so we just slide that in then. And then I had this made so that it fits a variety. Like we have these pens like this. Which are a little, little fatter. That'll fit in there just fine. Okay, and then we got... Uh, those type pens, and we have the pencils too. So I like um, anything that has a clip on it. So I think it fits in there and stays then. And then you can, you're all set. You can close it up and it doesn't look better. And you can put a closure on if you want. I find that it doesn't need a closure because most of the time I'm pulling sheets of paper out. This is not something I save. I do not save this. This is things that I use on a daily basis in this one. So I'll jot notes down and I'll put my budget in there and appointments, stuff like that. And then a lot of times I'm ripping papers out. Like if I put my grocery list down, I might just tear it right out. Because I don't like, you know, electronics putting my notes and everything. So that's how I do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed 
this fun little project. It's not that hard to, to, to make, you know, something different. Um, if you want to see me decorate a composition full uh, notebook, let me know and I can, I can, we can do some decorating on ones that I save. This one I do not save. I, I save my binder. And like I said, I do not decorate. You can decorate the binder, but I end up, you know, getting rid of it. Um, you can save the chipboard inside once you get ready to throw it out. Because you can, you know, it doesn't matter if some of this paper stays on it. But you can you recycle that too. Put new paper right over the top even if you, if it gets too beat up. But that's why I don't decorate mine. Who are we going to use first? We're going to use Hello Kitty, I think, huh? All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this little project. Give me a thumbs up and please subscribe if you're new to my channel. And again, thank you all to all my subscribers and all the lovely comments. Bye, everyone.